I thought it would be interesting today to just talk about portraiture and um, use it as a tool to explore some ideas about shape and lighting and things like that um, and focus on kind of the varieties you can, you can get out of it just in terms of some basic concepts regardless of the style you kind of put onto it. So we'll switch over and do that right now. Um, I pulled some images from Reddit, uh, gets drawn. Um, because it's a good source for finding just sort of regular people. And I thought what's interesting about these is that each one of these has a different lighting um, situation. And uh, they're all in color. And I mean, you can do portrait portraiture in, in color without a problem. But um, for now, we're just going to stick to sort of monochromes. Um, this one out here. Um, normally you'd get some, some light coming down from the sky and it would affect some of the shadows, but for the most part we're getting just a, a single direct light source, which is very clearly coming from this direction, and we can calculate that because of this angle here with the, with the hat. Um, and so this kind of makes it uh, relatively simple to do a uh, uh, portrait and, and sort of light study. And um, what's nice about this is sort of the gesture. It's like smoking is becoming kind of like archaic and, and old now, you know, it's not really something that many people do anymore, but it but it's sort of harkens to the past, you know. Um, and there's different ways that you can start with, with, with the portraiture. I mean, you can, you can start with sort of just some basic um, some basic shapes and um, I think this is a great way to kind of do it is uh, not really doing like a formalized like French academic envelope method but just sort of like going through and um, working with the, the big overall things right getting the idea sort of nailed down about how this is going to work. And when you have a light source that's very direct like this, I think it's um, it's pretty easy to work into a just sort of um, very simple, like this is on the dark side, this is on the, the light side, kind of a division, you know? So, um, I think I'll go back to that same uh, same tool, but make it a little larger, or maybe just use a uh, a chunky flat brush, um, like this kind of thing, and uh, basically what we can do is just divide light and dark, um, and get kind of close on the first pass and progress from there. There's a little triangle of light over here, a little bit on the lapel here. What I think is interesting about this kind of thing is, is using like um, sort of too big of a brush to get detail. Um, so it's like if you were using uh, ink wash to draw, you could just use a big chunky ink brush, and then for any places that got too much uh, too much ink on it, got too heavy, you could then come back with like white out or gouache and and change it. Um, you know, and I think what's interesting about this too is this is like suggestive of what this guy looks like, or just in terms of like the light patterns. Um, and what this is also doing is taking us back to some basic shapes, right? Um, we don't necessarily have to be like super accurate about this stuff either. Um, it can be close on this first pass. And I think um, a lot of this idea is just, you know, how do, how do you start? with a portrait or, or any kind of artwork. 
um, because starting out can be really, really tricky. Um, so this little patch under here, right? And some patches for the for the fingers here, individual fingers over here. So here we're getting into smaller forms, so we might need to do some stuff like this. And uh, maybe we need to bring out more depth under here. Maybe cut into this shape because there's the hair coming out here. What's fun about doing this is that it's very much a um, it's either in shadow or it's light, and it just forces you to think in terms of like what's really what's really necessary to get this across. Um, again, make a little cut for the for the nose there, and a little bit there, because we're getting a patch of light just on the on the lip there. And paint it back and work it back and forth. We're not getting any light on the uh, left side of the face, but we're getting some light in the hair up here that is beyond what's going on with the hat. So we're getting some, a lot of light on the, on the hair over here. And then this shape's probably just too big. So working real simply the bait with just an eraser, really. And you can do this with uh, really any medium. You know, this can be done with uh, chalk, charcoal, be done with pen, ink, digital, be done with pencil. And, you know, I think uh, a little charcoal might be interesting. Vine charcoal or just... Uh, your standard hard charcoal um, which I quite like. I like I like to use um, media that are stiffer and, and less uh, and less loose like vine charcoal though I haven't revisited vine charcoal in several years so I mean I may like it more now um, than I did when I was in, s in school using it. It's a very real possibility that my mind has, has been changed there by age and circumstance. We need to get this arm here. So I think what what this is this is doing is it's being simple but descriptive. And just giving you the opportunity to like work through the basic, basic fundamentals of what it takes to make something work. And if you can get something to work um, in this very basic way, and, and for it to look interesting and have some good shapes, um, when you get fancy with it and you develop this further, it's gonna be interesting. Um, we may need to go in and just keep refining, right? And, and get some stuff like this going change the actual face shape and work like that. So I mean this is pretty interesting to me in terms of like distribution of light. Um, I like some of the shapes that it creates um, and and I think it you know it would be a good place to start. And I think so much of portraiture is just how to, how do you start, right? Um, <clears throat> because like a more standard and obvious way to start uh, is just with um, like your your Andrew Loomis method, which is like this, where you do your um, your head, and then you divide it right, and do something like this, and then you begin to just sort of find the hairline find your center line, 
um, you know, work into the eyes, nose, mouth, and you sort of like plot out all the divisions here. And um, it works. Um, I don't think this is very fun um, because it's it's so formulaic. Um, but I think what it what it does is it is it provides a good roadmap, um, sort of when you're starting out, right? And um, it allows you to uh, get a reliable and and standard result. And you know I think a lot of people just they need that. Um, but you know the other thing too is as soon as you're done with this now you're fighting this dumb circle and um, if you're working in like in pen or something like that putting that circle down is just like the death of the rest of your portrait so um, I don't necessarily think this is the the ultimate way to sort of like begin a portrait I think um, it's it's fine and it works um, but it might not be where you, like where you want to take it, especially if you want to work with um, with something more than like pencil or, or something like that. Like if you want to work with ink, I think that's a, a not so great way. Um, I think um, you. I mean, you can you can get it to work with ink, but I think working with with like overall shapes like this and Maybe you do like plot out some of the essential features of the face. Um, the trick here is to get the tilt, right? So whatever you need to do to get the tilt, I think it is is important. Um, and I think over exaggerating the tilt, right? Like the tilt here goes about like that, but over here, I think if you exaggerate it like that, it's going to bring more um, more personality out of it, right? And then you notice that there's like the hair is kind of coming up here, right? So maybe we want to just be sure that we get that shape there, right? And then it comes back close and back out, you know? And we just start designing, right? We can design on a big arc. Um, this kind of creates a nice little S curve off the side of the out the side of the face. Like the um, shoulder comes out of the hair here, and then arcs down with another nice little S-curve to the far shoulder. And um, looking at these like two-dimensional linearities in terms of arc, S-curve, and straight line, um, I think is really nice. And, and you can do that uh, within the contours of the face, too. You can think about how these arcs might overlap, right, with the cheeks, and how they might create the anatomical shapes that you need, right? Um, you know, across the eyes, you know, it is typically ramrod straight from pupil to pupil. But then when you're doing the eye shape themselves, right, you need a nice arc. Um, paying attention to what that is for each person is, is really important, I think. Um, because that kind of gives them their personality, you know? And then working into the, the eye socket itself and thinking about like these larger forms that aren't necessarily what people immediately draw in portraiture. Um, getting a layout to begin like that. And there's nothing that says that this can't be like you're using this person to get an interesting drawing, right? So it doesn't have to necessarily keep to her attitude, right? Like we could take this and um, these lines here sort of suggested age marks, you know, I think um, it could be interesting to, to take this uh, person and, and turn her into like an old, um, an older lady, you know, with uh, like lines coming up here and draw out something that's that's not there or that could be there and uh, and whatnot. I think anatomically, you know, 
using bits of bits of anatomy for it, right? Like you have these sternocleidomastoid muscles, which create this little V shape here, and that connects in with the neck here. And then running back in space, you have uh, the trapezius muscles back here, and then you have your clavicles here, right? And then you have the actual clothing, which wraps around nicely here, right, and shows off the form. See these two arcs go back. It's just like we're we're drawing a cylinder, you know, for the upper part of the upper part of the chest, and we're just using the clothes to create this um, this sort of line, which um, is really nice and, and effective, I think. Um, and then you can make this this person look in different directions, right? You can place the irises. Uh, in different positions, there's nothing that says that it has to be exactly like the reference photo. Um, and so this is another way to begin. And um, you know, I think I drifted towards this because we're in a different lighting situation. We're basically in a front lit, um, very soft ambient lighting situation. So your darks, you know, are going to be. Um, basically just pushed back on the sides and your shadows are going to be in here in the hair and maybe a little bit around the edge of the hair you might get very faint shadows but for the most part like this figure is like largely in light and um, that means that an approach this would favor an approach that tends towards line and um, and simple shapes. Like you could probably even just do a flat shape for the entire torso, you know, and just not even do anything fancy with this. And you could do a darker flat shape for the hair. And this is without like getting into the fussy details of actually rendering the hair and, and making it look like something. This is pushing it into just the realm of like, you know, two dimensionally, how might you approach this? And you know this this maybe could give you some ideas about that. And from here, you know, there's a lot of directions you can take it, right? And you can spend time like with the rendering and and getting details in. But this um, gives you a different way to start than than this here. And um, some of it, I think, it has to do with, with the lighting situation. Um, here we have um, an interesting lighting situation with, with this fellow um, because we've got um, uh, two strong light sources and the ambient light source. So if we take the, the head shape, which is a very um, really nice like classic head shape with these beautiful sort of arcs here and a, and a peak to the top of the skull and uh, sort of a gentle jaw curve, right? We've kind of got his head shape there. And the neck kind of comes down and is um, indicated by what's going on with the clothing. And the clothing gives it this, this nice um, straight li line quality um, in contrast to the um, quality of the rest of the face with the arcs. So um, what's possible to do here is to kind of uh, mix these approaches that we did here because we have multiple light sources. We can work on flat shapes and, and direct lighting, but then we can also take into account some other things that are going on. Because you see right here you have a lighting situation that's coming from either a reflector or a light that they carried out into the into the photograph. Right here, 
you have the sunlight coming down. And then you'll notice right here and right here, you have this funky blue color and maybe down right here and right here um, that's coming in from the sky. So you have essentially a big ambient blue light source. You have a direct sunlight and you have this reflector um, as well. And so um, this can create an interesting opportunity for, for the exploration of lighting. And um, we can think about how we might explore that by kind of dividing up these lighting shapes. You know, obviously the brightest one is the sun up here, right? Super bright. And it creates a little rim around here, right? And even into the ear. Um, a little peak over there on the ear as well. And then um, back to our standard shadows, right? We've got the shadows that are created over here and create these interesting um, shapes around and under the nose. Maybe a little under the lip. We have deep shadow down here and we've got deep shadow here. Ear uh, shadow going on as well. The eyes will go somewhere around here. And, you know, if we were to divide this up and to sort of eliminate um, everything but the sunlight. Um, it could be really, it could be really interesting, right? Like if we took out everything but this this light source here, the sun, all of this would go into shadow. You might get a little bit of on the nose, and maybe a little bit on the cheeks, right? But basically, you would have a lighting situation like this. So it would all be kind of like, you know down lit and you're only really working with that backlit sort of source um, and then if we add in the, the second sort of light like and um, I'll color code that with the blue right um, the blue is going to kind of come in over here right and over here and it's kind of soft it's still in the shadow but it's there Right? And you can kind of see the, the ambient blues like coming in just a tad in the ear maybe too. Um, especially down here on this ear. And you'll see it too where where there's getting some ambient blue in the shadows here. Um, and then you get the the back to the the light. It's coming off of this reflector. Right, especially here in the, the T zone and down here. And I think this is this is kind of fascinating when you start to, to juggle three different light sources, right? And how they all interact with each other. Um We can go in and probably even soften some of this, make it not so stark. And then we've got a distinct shadow there. So this is another way to, to sort of begin the portraiture, and and I think um, and regardless of material, you can th the it's the thought that counts here. Um, you know, just thinking of the portraiture differently and, uh, and approaching it based on these different thought patterns. Um, this one's interesting because we've got two light sources going on. We have a, a sort of 
ex like exterior rim light and then a lot of reflected and bounce light in the um, in the sort of area uh, within this room. So it's an interesting head shape too because it's kind of like squared off. So I think um, doing things like squaring off the shape is, is kind of fascinating also. And uh, you can begin with that shape and then sort of struggle with it from there. Um, you know, we know we've, we've, we've got this light coming in over here. And it just kind of does this. And that's about like the extent of this, uh, this direct light source here. And, um, you know, that's, that, that's it, right? So then we can think of, well, okay, we've got, um, like other light sources uh, coming in. So um, what we could do is just sort of use the paper tone as that light source. So you notice that the light's coming from this back and then we have bounce light coming in um, around the room, you know, from several different directions probably. But um, we notice that there's like deep shadows here and there's a deep shadow here and in here, right? Um, so that would indicate that we're getting more bounce light kind of off, off the ceiling <coughs> than in any other area. So what we might be able to do is, is uh, on planes that are, um, that are kind of receding like this, you know, going back and, you know, if, if we're talking about a box form, if we have a, a plane under here, we'll, we'll put that in the shadow We'll leave this one blank, and then we have our one little light source. So when we come down to the nose down here, we can think, well, the nose has its its plane under here, and the side of the nose, as it transitions to being under, is where a lot of the shadow is going to be, and then get a little under the eye, but then there's a little reflected light like in this section right here. So we're going to leave that under the eye itself. Got a lot of um, a lot of shadow there. Then in the corners by the nostrils, got a lot of shadow there, a lot of shadow there. We can put in our uh, like a little bit of shadow core information as we transition from that light. But this is kind of funky because that shadow core is not like super dark and we don't necessarily need it, you know? Like we're defining that corner just fine without that shadow core. I think it's very, um, it's not it's, it's almost just not even necessary, right? And then uh, even though this lip is red, you can tell that it's uh, that it's darker. We're getting a little bit of shadow under the the nose too. I'm getting some shadow over here. Definitely some shadow under the lip, and then we can change the head shape and modify it, pushing that under the shadow. And we've got a lot of shadow coming off of the uh, the shirt here. So this is another potential way to begin, and um, you know we can go under the hair and snag some shadows there as well. And then the hair's got its own sort of ribbon form going on. And we don't want to forget ears, little bits of shadows in the ears. And we can probably bring more ear out than is in the, the actual reference, but don't have to. And then this is part of the part of the hair over here.
you know, and then we could also just sort of like cheat it a little bit for the sake of the portrait and just bring out this little highlight on the nose here to pull the nose forward. And maybe just a little bit on the on the actual nose itself. We could probably like sneak in some highlights there. We could even get into like drawing more of the, the features, you know. Um, drawing in kind of like the look here. And uh, yeah, I think I think beginning simply like this is is the way to begin with the portraits. And I think what I wanted to focus on was just some some ways to begin and to give you some options about how to approach this. You know, um, you don't necessarily have to use any of these. Uh, you can use whatever you feel like. But I think um, these are the idea is that you can begin anywhere and then modify from there and. Um, you can stick to the reference very closely or not. You can break rules, change rules, and develop things on your own terms. Um, you know, I think um, even if, if you wanted to get into color, um, I think beginning with just two color pencils, complementary colors, you know, like uh, for portraiture, just like an, an orange like we've got here and a blue would be great, you know? like an orange would be, you know, give you this kind of tone, and a blue would give you like this kind of tone. And interesting things happen when you when you mix them back and forth, right? You um, you begin to get uh, these these really interesting neutrals. And um, you know, if you work on tone paper, then you can come back with with like um, white pen or white colored pencil and bring your lights back, and then you can you know, mix that in with the blue and sort of work up your your color range um, and your neutrals in, in interesting ways that way. So um, there's potential there too. So um, that's it for now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that and um, and it should, should help you uh, get some options and, and some ways to begin a portrait that are maybe slightly different than what you've seen before. Um, you know, I know that, that the grid methods and the Loomis and the construction are very important to a lot of people and, and, and everything, but um, I wanted to open up some, some room for other ways to begin. <laughs>